My mom's cancer diagnosis came at a very particular time in my life. It was a month to the day that my then fiance, now husband, and I got engaged. And we were seven hours into like our nine and a half hour drive from Pittsburgh, where we were living, to St. Louis, where we were going to be for the next week and a half celebrating the holidays with my family. What should have been a very joy-filled, memory-filled uh, stretch of time is now just a kind of a blur of senses. The last thing I remember though of that trip <laughs> was the hug I gave my mom when we left to go back. I remember crying on the phone when I reassured her that I didn't care if she had hair or not. Having her at my wedding, that's what would make it a fairy tale. <laughs> I was thinking to myself as we were uh, at the reception hall that there is no better feeling than this, how grateful I am to have her there. But what I didn't know was that a uh, little more than a year later, when she was there to see my son take his first breaths, how good that would feel, how grateful I was that she was there for that. A team member that was in a more corporate role was impacted by cancer and her mother was actually somebody that was a part of the services that were provided here. When my mom was diagnosed it became something personal to me. My cancer was diagnosed through the annual mammogram. After further testing it was determined that I had a fast-growing aggressive HER2 positive breast cancer. The tumor was removed, then I had radiation and 13 months of chemotherapy, during which time I lost my hair. Both of my uh, grandmothers passed away before I was born. Uh, they both um, suffered from, from cancer-related illnesses that ultimately led to their, their deaths. And I just wanted her to fight so that she would be there for our grandkids. Today, we think of COVID as the disease that affects everyone, but last year, cancer killed nearly two times as many people as COVID. This year, there will be an estimated 1.9 million new cancer cases diagnosed and nearly 610,000 cancer deaths in the United States alone. Cancer is the number two cause of death in the United States. Distress is the most common side effect of cancer, with nearly half of patients or caregivers reporting clinically significant cancer-related distress. Yet it's the most underreported side effect. Psycho-oncology research identifies three significant stressors that affect a person's ability to manage their quality of life. Loss of hope, loss of control, and unwanted aloneness. Cancer Support Community of Greater St. Louis provides a comprehensive program to address stressors caused by cancer and to help our participants gain control through education and informed lifestyle changes, to increase their social ties, and to find opportunities for hope and meaning with our support groups. We quickly adapted to virtual programming. Now our participants are telling us they want to continue to have a virtual option even after the pandemic ends. With your help, we can continue providing virtual options so that our participants can get the services they need whenever they need them, wherever they are. I'm a great supporter of this organization and want to do my best to make it known in the community. The cancer support community is just an invaluable resource that people can tap into uh, to find support, find camaraderie. They're a family in and of themselves of, of people that have been through this journey. I always feel like cancer's looking over my shoulder. I don't know if that ever goes away, but I'm so grateful to be standing on two feet sharing this story today.